that uh, we have uh, changed the, um, the time of our clocks in the UK here, uh, an hour backwards. So um, depending on where you are, uh, in order for uh, for you to line up with our time, uh, you needed to refer to the uh, GMT. That's why we always say um, our, our service starts at half past ten uh, in the morning at GMT. Um, you know, so if you were uh, on our on our site uh, in our area, uh, we apologize for that. But um, you know, hopefully uh, you are now with us. Praise God, Hallelujah. I'm excited about the word that God has given me today uh, to bring to you to you all, and uh, I believe that you you you'll be blessed by this because it it, it really blessed me, it encouraged me. Uh, it's um, very much part of uh, my, my own life, my own testimony, hallelujah, and I like speaking about faith, um, you know, because, you know, faith is everything. We are in this life, um, relationship with God because uh, of this one thing and, and, and faith. So we have expressed our our faith in, in God and, uh, and, and, and because of that we, we are saved, we, we are His children. Amen. So we have exercised our uh, the saving faith, and we believe we have eternal life. I have eternal life. I, I don't doubt at all, uh, in a single moment, that uh, you know I don't have it. I have it, and I see the the fruit of that. I see the effect of that in my life of who I used to be before I put this faith in God and who I am today. So there is a fruit in my own life that I can testify of. And, and and then and then uh, there is the, uh, the the living faith that you know we, we, we need we need to uh, um, exercise every time in our lives. Once once you you are saved, uh, you know you've exercised that uh, saving faith in Jesus Christ. You know now you're still here. We're still on this earth. We we not yet uh, uh, gone, gone to, to heaven. You know, we still have to live on this earth, and there are instructions how we will live in this life. And to live this life, we need faith. That is the living faith. The faith of trusting God every day in everything. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And we always start with this thing that, you know, you, know, you can't exercise the living faith uh, in, in God without having uh, exercised the saving faith. So if you haven't given your life to Jesus yet, um, we would like to give you an opportunity or introduce you to Jesus to give your life uh, to him. And, and just, just you, know, uh, uh, you know, if you've been seeking, you know, you, you've been uh, you know, uh, uh, troubled in your spirit, uh, you, you, um, you, know, you have had questions that are troubling you in your sleep and you know, you've spoken to, to friends about things and, you know, we just want you to know that ah, this most mighty, the Holy Spirit is speaking to you uh, about your life and uh, you are just feeling dissatisfied about life himself, you are looking for answers. You know, God uh, has done it all for us. He is there to be discovered. Amen. And, and you can uh, call upon him and and become his child. That is the first step. That is a saving faith. So right now, maybe before I even go into the word of God, because you know, the word of God that I'm going to share would be sweeter, <laughs> hallelujah, to receive if you have given your life to Jesus. So right now, you know, and uh, believing that you, you're watching me right now, or maybe, you, you, you know, you know it, it could be uh, recorded later on. You know, me, and you haven't given life to Jesus yet. It means you're seeking uh, for answers about life, and 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 it's very simple. You know, you you you've got first of all to believe that He is, and that He's the rewarder of them that diligently seek after Him. You can't come to Him without believing that He is, He exists, He's a Creator, and that He loves you. Hallelujah. So so right now, right now. Before we even go into the Word of God, if you are such a one, I just want you to, uh, you know, reach out your hand to us, whatever screen you are watching me from, and, and just say these words after me. Say, so, dear Lord Jesus, I thank you for, uh, you know, this program right now that I'm watching. 
uh, this broadcast from City Family Church. And, and I thank you for this man who is uh, speaking to me about the things that I've been thinking about, that have been uh, occupied my mind and my spirit, my, my spirit. I've been disturbed about these things. I'm looking for answers. And here he is. He's just talking exactly about these things. And Father, if you be the solution, if you be the one that I'm looking for, right now, I surrender my life to you. I say, come into my life. And thank you that you have said that you love me. I receive your love right now. And I believe that it's through your son, Jesus Christ, whom you sent to come and die for me. Thank you, Jesus, for loving me. And now I've always thought I'm not good enough for you, Lord. And therefore, I would like you to cleanse me from my sins. I believe you will, because that's why you came. Wash me from my guiltness. And accept me just as I am. I have heard that you are a gracious God. You are a loving God. And them that come to you, you don't push away. I come to you just the way I am right now. Help me, Lord. Forgive my sins. I am sorry. And Lord, if that is all, and I believe right now in my heart as I say these things, as this man has just been telling me, if that is all, then thank you, Lord, that I believe I'm your child. Thank you that you can call me your child. I would like to live my life that pleases you. So I pray that from now on, I will live a life to please you. Lord, I know this is a new life to me. I've never lived this life before. But help me, Lord, by whatever means that are there that you have put in place. I've heard of something called the Holy Spirit from my friends, from people, that he helps people. Holy Spirit, help me too. Help me even through people, bring people around. I believe I'll be helped. I ask all this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Praise God. I may have prayed or led you a little bit too fast. After this uh, service is over, you can always go back and listen to this uh, prayer and just pray it over again. And so what? Just as you prayed. You have believed. You are saved now. You are a child of God. Now I'm going to talk about how to live this life, this new life that you've just joined with the living faith. You've expressed your faith, your confidence in God to save your life, to change your life. How you need to use the same faith to live this life. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Glory to God and for all of you. Amen. For such a one, welcome to the kingdom of God and to the family of the children of God. Hallelujah. And for everyone else, God bless you and thank you for joining in. Let's just commit uh, the sharing of this word into, um, into God's hands uh, through this prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus right now, we are so grateful, Lord. For this opportunity to look into your word thank you for gathering us together online from all over the world lord some people live right now but we know that others too will join in in this service that you want to speak to us in this word let alone so father thank you for this technology oh god and that we can use it lord for the extension of your kingdom and that you can speak to us through this technology. We are grateful, oh God. And our Father, by your Holy Spirit, breathe upon this word that you have given me, Lord. May I speak it, Lord, as you've revealed the word to me into your people's hearts. Holy Spirit, as you brought this word into my heart, take it now and impart it into the hearers. They will be doers of it as well. Father, may knowledge increase. Hallelujah. The epignosis knowledge increase into every hearer. The faith will increase as well. In the name of Jesus. Father, your word is powerful and sharper than any two edged sword. It will do that which cannot be explained by science. 
and any natural law. So Father, in Jesus' name, right now, I speak and I decree the miraculous power of God through your word to touch your people. That something new, something unexplainable will happen in he that believeth or in she that believeth as we receive this word. In Jesus' name. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Wow, I'm excited. Um, to be back in the studio and just bring this word uh, to you. Amen. And uh, for those of you from City Family Church, we do have uh, um, an evening uh, fellowship tonight, a Zoom fellowship um, at 7 p.m. Uh, please join in and we'll, we'll talk through some of the things that I'm going to say today and we'll pray together. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm just loving uh, uh, those fellowships and you know above all just to catch up and, and see each other amen from uh, where, 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 wherever we are praise God praise God hallelujah well let's uh, get into the word of God then amen praise God hallelujah well as you can see um, from the screen um, the title of uh, my message is we understand by faith we understand by faith amen what do we understand the things of god hallelujah the the wisdom of god uh the the deeds of god um you know the things that we see but cannot explain and the things that we don't see like god himself the invisible God and yet he's infallible he is real and his effects hallelujah are right uh, with us um, so how do we understand all that we understand by faith hallelujah that's the kind of my message um, as, as um, it's, it's, it's on, on the screen I believe uh, you know we understand by faith and I'm just gonna bring um, a few things uh, to you and um, um, I, I, I am bringing this word as a, as a follow-on on, on uh, the message we had last week uh, you know brought by uh, our elder in the church uh, and teacher uh, teacher Andy uh, you, you, you can go back to our, our website uh, again which is on the screen there I believe uh, www citifamilychurch.com uh, and uh, you know go into the uh, the messages uh, you you find the message from last week uh, preached by uh, teacher Andy and uh, he was talking about uh, you know uh, you know you know trying to make sense of um, uh, the e evil and, and the suffering that we see in the world uh, you know, both from the Christian and, and the non-Christian uh, point uh, of view, uh, because we see these things, and yet uh, we know, or we are told, or we are taught that there is a good God, and He is loving, and He is powerful, and He is all-knowing, and He is all-present. How come He would? Uh, have such attributes and yet be seeing all this evil and, uh, and uh, you know and, and, and the suffering you know going on into the world uh, why, why would you have such uh, uh, abilities and capabilities and, and yet allow evil people to do evil things to, to others uh, uh, you know commit all these crimes or or why, 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 why would he have such capabilities and uh, uh, and abilities and and that can even stop this virus, the coronavirus, you know? And uh, and yet, you know, it's just spreading and causing all this um, uh, uh, rampage and, and 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 chaos and and, and loss of lives and, and these questions. These are real questions. And and he, being a teacher. You know, took us into some kind of uh, you know history of you know theological his, you know history of 
how you know some people have looked into some of these questions and argued over them so there are no questions that are just existing to us in this dispensation in this generation <laughs> they've been there and and they've actually formed the part of the doctrines that we are you know we have right now some people they, they were bothered by these things and and they discussed them and they differed you know but praise be to god hallelujah that he watches over his word. He is never allowed any theologian, any teacher, any anybody to distort, confuse his infallible, anointed, breathed upon word of God. He's watched over it, and it's reached us in its uh, uh, state, in in its truth. Hallelujah. And, and we can understand these questions. We can weak we, we, from the Word of God. And with the help of the Holy Spirit, we are able to, even, even, even the uneducated, the unlearned, hallelujah, glory to God. The Holy Spirit is, it will help us understand these things. Remember, the, the disciples of Jesus Christ where, 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 where are a variety of people. Some of them were very learned, educated. Some of them were doctors, like look. Others were just fishermen. Others were, were, were solicitors. Others were tax collectors. They knew about numbers and, 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 and the tax and, and the accounting and all those kind of things. So there, it was a group of people that came from different backgrounds. So some of the things that Jesus was teaching would have gone pew over some, some of their, their heads, especially some of the parables he spoke. I tell you, it's not just the multitudes that did not understand these parables. Even his disciples didn't. They needed him to explain these parables to them when he was with them in, 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 a, in a secret place or back home after they've done ministry to the multitudes. So don't, 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 don't blame yourself, don't, 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 you, you know, the Holy Spirit, we have the Holy Spirit that helps us understand. He will come upon everybody, hallelujah, and that's why we're talking about faith. We understand by faith. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. And uh, so, <laughs> remember, one time Jesus said to the disciples, I've got so many things that I would like to tell you. So many things I would like to tell you. But, it's, but he said to them, he said to them, but I can't, tell, I, can't, I can't tell you everything because you don't have the capacity to understand them. Now if you say that to somebody today, they'll probably knock you in, their, in your face because that sounds like an insult to them, to their intelligence, to their faculties. You know, can you imagine, I'm, I'm an academic myself, and I, 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 I lecture students. I've got to respect their capabilities and their, their level of gifting. I can tell, you know, that some students are very gifted, they understand things very quickly, even from the questions they ask, but there are those that struggle a little bit. But I can go to them that I know are struggling a little bit and say, and say uh, you know, <laughs> you, 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 <laughs> you know, you don't have capacity to understand these things, so you, you oh, hold on, let me find another way of, of doing things. No, we have a way of explaining these things. We probably may make an appointment with them and bring, you know, I invite them to my office and then I sit them down and they take a bit of time to explain these things to them. So, so Jesus did the same thing and says, look, I have so much to tell you. So much to tell you. So much. But you can't understand this, all of these things right now. First of all, time is limited you know and it's a lot of information however i'll ask my father to send you another helper the holy spirit who will teach you everything in fact he said he will remind you everything that have taught you that means they 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 were they were they, 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 they are going to forget they forgot some things do we also forget? Yes, we do. We do. You know. And then he said, and on top of that, he will, he will give you the capacity 
to understand even more revelations of the kingdom of God. The Holy Spirit. Ha, hallelujah. We can't live this life without the Holy Spirit. He's our helper. And I just wonder how we could have so many uh, denominations, churches that, you know, ignore the Holy Spirit. You say you're a Christian and you're a church and you don't embrace the Holy Spirit. Jesus told the disciples to hang on and to wait in Jerusalem until they endured with power from above by the Holy Spirit because we need the Holy Spirit. And then you're teaching the church, we don't need the Holy Spirit, all this thing called the Holy Spirit. Oh, oh, oh. the Holy Spirit is a person, it's God himself. And Jesus said, disciples, wait until he comes. He will help you in everything that I've taught you. And he will reveal more things to you. Apostle Paul, who's written more than a third of, of, of the New Testament of the Bible, was not with Jesus. But where did he get the knowledge and, and the revelation? And I'll come to some of that in, in what I'm going to share today by the Holy Spirit. So hey, we understand by faith, but we have the teacher, the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So yeah, so that background that teacher Andy gave us was very interesting. Glory to God of how these, all these theologians and they differed. Some of them they went astray about it and explained things. But God in all that, through all these generations, he has watched the boundaries of his word. And here we are today. And with the help of the Holy Spirit, glory be to God, we are able to uh, appreciate the word of God. So, um, so I'll, 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 build, I'll build on that. We understand by faith. And one of the scriptures that you know he shared that had something that really touched me was in John chapter 9. Uh, and uh, I'll, I'll put that scripture on, on the screen. John chapter 9 uh, from verse 1 to verse 4 uh, which says, um, And as he passed by, he saw a man blind from birth. And his disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Jesus answered, It was not that this man sinned or his parents, but that the works of God might be displayed in him. Wow. We must work the works of him who sent me while it is day. Night is coming when no one can work. Now I want to bring your attention, you know this scenario here, is they have a situation of evil right in their hands. Not, nobody, nobody looks at a blind person. We, we, we all have blind people wherever we live. We've seen blind people and a lot of them, particularly in, in poor nations, a lot of these blind people are beggars. Their plight is so bad. We see them by the, by the street sides. You know, you see beggars who are able-bodied. You know, and uh, you know they, they are they are they are, they are not disabled in any way, but there are those beggars that are disabled as well, and particularly the the uh, the ones that are blind. If you're blind, you can't see. There's much you can do. You depend on other people to get you by. So it's an evil that you know you know nobody you know can wish on anybody. And now they're trying to understand why this evil on this man, because blindness was considered to be uh, something linked with sin. So they had an opportunity now, as Jesus passed by, you know, a blind man, disciples were like, hey, Jesus is a blind man here. This is how we understand these things from the philosophy that we've learned, from the ethics that we've been taught. There are people that are blind, there is sin involved in this. There is evil. So evil has been committed. And why has it been permitted? So is it him or is it his parents? They are taking an answer to this evil that they have encountered here. Okay. Now look at verse 3 how Jesus answered. It was not that this man sinned. Nor his parents. So he is completely removed the blame on the man and on the parents. So who's to blame them? Who's to blame Jesus? Because the very blame that we, we weren't expecting, you would confirm 
You've taken it off. But we still don't have an answer to this. So who's to blame then? And then he goes on. And remember, this blind man, he's only blind. He's not deaf. So he's hearing this conversation. And he must be relieved to, to hear that it's not his fault. Neither is it his parents' fault. The parents were there as well. They must be relieved to hear that it's not their fault as well. Because, you know, how many times have they been told or ridiculed that you are the cause of this? And that's why this came up. How many times has this blind man been ridiculed that you brought this upon yourself? That's why this came up. The disciples had a reference point why they brought this statement to Jesus. And Jesus takes both of them out. Wow. But they still don't understand. This evil is still here. It didn't just happen. There's a cause for it. We live in a world of cause and effect. There must be a cause for it. And then Jesus goes on to say, but that the works of God might be displayed in him. Oh, wow. And this blind man is hearing those words. <laughs> I don't know how he's reacting. We're not told here. But I can imagine he probably would have leapt up. It's just, he's just heard two things that even before he's received his sight, he's heard two statements from Jesus that have just kind of removed and lifted this thing off, off him. One is he's not to blame for the evil. And two, that a God has a plan that we all and not everybody else can see. Only God knows. But Jesus has now told us and revealed to us that the, the, the works of God might be displayed in this man. This man must be thinking, wow, I am the specimen of the one of God. I am the workshop. Come on, Jesus. Come on, God. Do whatever you want to do. Good news. So what do we see? In this, and, and I really thank God that, you know, Teacher Andy, you know, brought us this scripture in his teaching. Because it's, it's really, it's really touched me and drawn my attention to this episode that I've read about so many times. Now what we see here, we see, we see three things that I've listed down here. One is, this, this encounter here proves three things. It might prove more things that the Holy Spirit may reveal to you. But I've just written down these three things. That God is involved in every seemingly evil and unfortunate situation. That God is not, you know, withdrawn from, from all this evil that we have questions about. Maybe even affecting your life. Even as his child. That God is not withdrawn from it. That God is not paid a, a, a blind eye to it. That God is not it's just been disinterested in it and they just allow this evil and suffering to just lavish through this world like this virus is doing. We've seen here from the response of Jesus that God is involved in every seemingly evil and unfortunate situation. He is involved. How is he involved? Well, Jesus told us that, that, the, 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 that the works of God might be displayed in him. Hallelujah. Then the second point is that God does not dodge the blame. Because if Jesus has removed the blame from both the man and his parents, then somebody's got to pick up the can. As they say in the world, the can of worms, somebody's got to pick up the blame. We see that God is not dodging the blame. He's not relocating the blame. He puts himself right in it. He confronts this evil face to face. So I want to encourage you that through all these questions of the unanswered, and I know it can be difficult, like we shared last Sunday in the evening, you know, in the, in the evening uh, service, that you know, from the pastor point of view, one of the most difficult things is when you are confronted with having to encourage and uplift people who are going through things that are unexplainable, and these are believers. You can blame it on the devil, you can blame it on anybody. But the thing is, the reality is, why has this happened? And now myself, I give my testimony. Those of me in my church, have, there are a few testimonies that I've given of my own times. And I'm not even saying that these times won't come. They will come, but I've been there 
We have had these questions. We have had to throw this Bible at God, literally. What I mean by that is that I threw this Bible on the wall of my house. And they said, God, why? Why me? Billions of people on the surface of this earth. And they all being affected the same way. Is this happening to everybody? My wives were there. But we see here, praise God, that God, <laughs> uh, he is not dodging the situation. He confronts it. God is, is involved in what's going on that we can't explain. And God is confronting it. And then the third thing that we see is that God is willing to work his work through that evil if we let him. So that blind man had to be there, had to be available, has to be dispositioned to allow God to accomplish this work. So God might work, uh, God's work might be displayed. Hallelujah. So God is working. God is working through that situation. He's not withdrawn from it. And there's some things that were brought to us in us uh, teaching. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. So I just want to build on that. You see, this world is seeking for knowledge. You see, all these answers, the wise wise, they are based on one thing. Knowledge. Knowledge. There is a narrative in the secular world or in this world generally that one of the problems of human race is lack of knowledge and information or lack of access to information. That's the narrative of the world. Why? Because human beings, we want to know. We want to know. We want to know answers to everything we don't understand. So there's this narrative in this world that, you know, is all because of lack of knowledge. So if we have knowledge, or we have access to information, we will solve these problems. We will know the answers. And there is no better generation than the one that we are living in that is so full of knowledge and information. As a matter of fact, we are being told this is the information generation. Yes, it is. But the question is about the reality. Is that giving us all the answers? No. We still, we still have, we don't know. We don't understand everything. Despite being a generation with so much knowledge and information, IT, information technology, internet, all these things. The things that children know at an early stage, I never knew them, and the people who are older than me never knew them even at that age. Information and so-called knowledge is so much in this generation. But the reality is, the narrative then, that lack of information and the knowledge is the problem the human race doesn't hold. Because I think we have information. We have a lot of knowledge, in fact, too much. But we still have answers. We're still grumbling for wise and wise and wise. So what is the world doing at the moment is educate, educate, educate. Introduce more things in our education system. More information, more access. Give every child an iPad, all the kind of things. But we still have the wise. There is a way of understanding these things. As a matter of fact, the dispensation in which we are was prophesied by Daniel. Look at Daniel chapter 12, verse 4. See on the screen. But you, Daniel, shut up the words and seal the book until the time of the end. Many shall run to and fro and the knowledge shall increase. 
This is a prophecy into our time now by Daniel that knowledge shall increase. Running to and fro is not necessarily physically people running from here and there. No, it's, it's people. There was a prophetic uh, insight into the future that people are going to be running to and fro looking for what? Looking for knowledge because there will be an increase of knowledge. There will be the, the flood of knowledge. There we are. Are we living these times right now? Yes, we are. Are we knowing everything? No. But there's an increase in knowledge. Thank God that the increase in the knowledge of God is parallel to the increase of knowledge in the world. Glory be to God. The Holy Spirit keeps releasing things and we are having revelations that our forefathers didn't have. So all truth is parallel. All facts are parallel. So we thank God. So which knowledge? That's why we are teaching these things. There is a the knowledge of God. We understand by, by faith. Hallelujah. So what has God given us to deal with what we don't understand? Or what we cannot understand? What has God given us to deal with the wise? How do we get about the wise of what we can't understand? Particularly when to deal with the evil and, and, and the sufferings which affect both Christians and non-Christians. Well, I haven't got this script on the screen, but Romans chapter 12 verse 13 says, And he has given to each and every one of us the measure of faith. Wow! Now we know that faith is important. We need faith in our Christian life. In fact, the whole Christian life is about faith, believing. And no wonder God has given to each and every one of us, according to Romans chapter 12, verse 3, the measure of faith. He started off your life with an account and he has deposited faith into that account because you need that to get up and run in this new life. But it's the same faith we need to understand what we can't understand, what we cannot answer, what we cannot explain by this, by natural law, by philosophy, even by theology. Faith. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Now, now I've got this scripture here in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 3. Verse 3. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 3. The Bible says, By faith, we understand. Underline those words. Underline those words. By faith, we understand. Just those first four words of that verse. Very important. By faith, we understand that the universe, creation, was created by the word of God so that what is seen was not made out of the things that are visible. That underlines everything. That, 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 puts me to, that puts me to rest in trying to understand how certain things that we see now are happening. He says, the things that we see now we are created, we made out of the things that we can't see. What does that mean? How can I get my head around that? How can I get my head around that? The things that I see were made from the things that we do not see. I can explain a little bit. Uh, this bottle here, I see it, and from the knowledge of science, I can somehow figure out and understand that this has been made from some uh, uh, plastic materials. I know everything in the universe we know even science acknowledges that evolutionists acknowledge the fact that they can talk about we need light we need energy we need water for things to grow but where does that energy come from they try to explain things backwards but they still can't get to the point where you can't still explain the unseen invisible things that have brought into being what we see there we are. But how do we understand these questions? 
This is where now the scientists and everybody, evolution ends there. But we who believe in God, here is the answer. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 3. By faith we understand. We have an understanding of these inexplainable ones. By faith. Oh, hallelujah. Right where you are, just say to, your word, to yourself these words. By faith I understand. By faith I understand. By faith I understand. By faith, I understand. Come on, speak to yourself and say, come, Sam, by faith, you understand. Sam, come on, by faith, you understand. It's not by mental knowledge. By faith, Sam, you understand. I have understanding. By faith. I underline that. It's settled for me. Glory be to God. So that means, hallelujah, that means, oh, I'm going to have to go into this thing called faith. I, because faith gives me understanding. So I, I, I want to zero into it and learn more about this faith. How it works. Because that's what I need. In understanding things I can't explain. That helps me. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Woo. Glory. Hallelujah. Now, by faith, man, we've got some definitions of faith. I've got some scriptures on the screen there. You know, Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1, and, and John chapter 20, verse 29. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1. We, we know that scripture very well. Faith is the assurance of things hoped for. For the conviction of things not seen. Hallelujah. That's the definition. That's our biblical definition of faith. It's an assurance. Now, assurance means, to be assured, it means you've got a certain understanding of something that, whether seen or not, you've got that conviction, that assurance, as if it's there. That's what assurance means. And that's the definition, the Bible definition of faith. There's tangibility in there. So I, if I make up my mind, I'm, I'm, going, I'm going the faith way. I'm going to understand everything that's going on around the world, going on in my life. I'm going to go the faith way. I'm going to go the Hebrews 11 verse 3. By faith I understand these things. And what does that faith give me? It gives me that assurance of things hoped for. And the conviction of things not seen. And that word not seen includes things I don't understand. Hallelujah. Because once you see it, you can understand it. How about John chapter 29, verse John chapter 20, verse 29? This is how Jesus explained this to Thomas. He says, Blessed are those who have not seen, yet they have believed. Underline that scripture. Blessed are those who have not seen yet have believed that is so important beloved for a christian walk if we want to see then faith is no longer operative if we want to understand faith is no longer operative and what i mean by understanding we have understanding what i mean is the wise of you know challenging the situation and putting the blame and things like that things that will cause you to sleep we, we, we've just been dealing with a, uh, some situation, you know, you know, some family friends that we know, not in the UK, somewhere in, in Africa, where, you know, there's been this, you know, it's been an illness in, in, in the family, and uh, of this family, and uh, there's been some loss of life as well, very tragic and explained, and, uh, and uh, so this member of the family, you know, went to some uh, 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 preacher, and, uh, you know, and, and did some prophetic things into into their family and and they, they were told that you know this death is being caused by this and this and this you no know, they are seeking understanding of the evil that they see they perceive is ravaging their family but this the 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 advice they got that didn't help after all it's just caused more confusion within the family because it's caused families to rise up one against the other, blaming each other, saying, you see, you the one who caused that person, you the one who brought that person in, you did, all that kind of things. You see? But we, we, 
you know, my, my wife and I have had to, you know, get involved because we are asked to, to do that. So we, we, we've been wanting to point them to this is I said, listen, listen, if you're a believer, if you're a believer, there's a way that God helps us understand these things. It's a way of Hebrews chapter 11, verse 3. And by faith, we understand. Because faith will, set, will settle you down in the midst of that inexplainable evil or whatever situation. Faith will bring that understanding. Hallelujah. Woo! Believing before we see. So this is the explanation. This is the definition of, of, of faith. Hallelujah. So it's, 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 it's being, uh, uh, in, in God's word, faith is commended as being sure about something that isn't witnessed firsthand. Something not seen. Something that cannot be seen now, or that is yet to be revealed. That's the, that's the comment, uh, commendation of faith from God's word. It's being sure. That includes being sure about, you know, how things are going to work out, even though I don't understand. Why? Because I trust in the one that I know is in control, like the disciples came to understand from their own and they had no more questions about that blind man. Thank God he was healed as well. They had more question, no more questions because they know the master is involved in this, knows everything. We better just trust in him. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Woo! You see, now on the other hand, on the other hand, we can also say, Faith, all faith is, is, is blind. All faith is blind. Now, I, I, I want to be careful here, and I will explain this. All faith is blind. What I mean is that I'm not saying that we have blind faith. We don't have blind faith. Our faith understands. Our faith has got eyes. Hallelujah. But what I mean by all faith is blind, in that our faith is a surety in things that we have not seen. That's what I mean by all that is right. Just like Jesus said to, to, to Thomas, he says, Blessed are those who have not seen yet they believe. Now, now taking that scripture, John chapter 20, verse 29, some critics of the word of God, and maybe as a Christian you've even been subject to this criticism that oh, you, you're just a blind follower of Jesus. You're following things that you don't understand. No, you're not a blind follower of Jesus. We're not blind followers. Our eyes have been opened. Hallelujah. We see why we could not see. That's why Jesus is the light. He shines in darkness. We were in darkness and he is light shone in us. So we're not blind followers. We are in the light. <coughs> so excuse me. But what I mean by all faith is blind is you don't have to see to believe. Because you know the one who sees everything. And that's why we put our faith in him. And let me tell you something, people. And we, this is the hypocrisy that we see by Antichrist and and, and uh, non-believers, particularly they may be, you know, the, the uh, evolution kind of scientists. They, they want to say to you that, you know, you can't have faith. You don't, faith is not relevant. But you understand that you also have faith. That if evolutions, for example, they believe that things are just going to turn out in a certain way. Because they believe that, you know, they, they, they don't understand. Where, 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 where the enzymes are, they can't even see them, they can't touch air, but somehow they, 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 they convince themselves that these things are going to bring about these things. Isn't that faith? They're exercising faith in things they can't explain and things they can't see. And now they come to you and accuse you of being a blind follower of Jesus. You know a blind follower of Jesus. You have faith that has made your mind and these eyes blind to things that you cannot explain and yet your spirit 
can see and understand the things that are unseen or the things that are unexplainable. That's the faith. Whoo, hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm an engineer. I, I, I design uh, things like and buildings and the foundations. And, uh, you know, I'm in this house here where the studio is. This house has got the foundation. Do you see the foundation? No, they don't. The people who live in this house, do they see the foundation? No. But somehow, they know that this house, somehow, is founded on some foundation designed by an engineer like me. And they go to bed sound and well. They don't see the foundation. But somehow they are sure. Isn't that faith? How about the children? We'll be going into Christmas right now. You know, children, irrespective of uh, whatever the governments are going to tell us that we're going to have uh, a digital Christmas and all that kind of stuff, do you think the children care about all this? All they want are presents. COVID-19 or no COVID-19? COVID-20 or not? That child still wants to have the Christmas, <laughs> the present. So they, they, have they seen the present yet? No. But somehow they're getting excited that they would see that present. That's all faith. That's all faith. Hallelujah. Woo, glory to God. Let me just uh, move on to some. So how do we... Uh, 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 now, uh, operate in this faith. You know, now we know what faith is. Amen? We, faith gets us away from uh, figuring things out, from all these senses, and yet we, begin, we are sure in things that we can't see. Hallelujah. So, I have listed a few things here. You know, how or, or what we should be like. I've got some examples here. Hallelujah. So uh, I'll just uh, uh, give, give you, um, there is a question there on the screen. It says, what should we be like to, uh, to understand by faith? Because we understand by faith. And we know what faith is. By a biblical definition. Now, what should we be like? To understand by faith. Glory to God. What should we be like to understand by faith? I just want to share three things that will help us to, to grow in this faith. To be uh, like in order to grow in faith. Because now we know faith is a key thing. Faith is a principal thing. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Here is one story here. Again of uh, a blind man. Now I've got the one thing that we have to be like is. We have to be like a blind man. Now I'll explain what that means. I'm not saying that, you know, we have blind faith. I've explained that already. I'm saying that we have to be like a blind man. Now I've got this story here in Mark chapter 8, verse 22 to 26. Let's, let's look at that story. They came to Bethsaida and some people brought a blind man and begged Jesus to touch him. Here we go again. A blind man. And they begged Jesus to just, to just touch him. Why did they beg Jesus to just touch him? It's because they've heard that this Jesus touches people and they get healed. Just a touch. Hallelujah. Just a touch from Jesus. So they begged him to touch him. Now, I know Jesus could have done that. Now, look at what Jesus did in verse 23. He took the blind man by the hand and led him outside the village. When he had spit on the man's eyes and put his hand on him, Jesus asked, Do you see anything? He looked up and said, I see people, they look like trees walking around. Once more, Jesus put his hands on the man's eyes. Then his eyes were opened. His sight was restored, and he saw everything clearly. Jesus sent him home, saying, Do not even go into the village. Now, there are just a few things that I want <laughs> to bring to your attention about this. I'm focusing on the reason why I'm saying in this faith, to understand by faith, 
to understand by faith. Let me very clearly on this. To understand by faith. One thing that we, you and I should be like is be like a blind man. Why do I say that? That is in verse 23. He took the blind man by the hand and led him outside the village. Now let me just say a few things about the blind man. The blind man could not, doesn't see. But he can hear. And he's heard people say to Jesus, Please Jesus, touch this man. Why does Jesus, Jesus is amongst all them people. This man has never been touched by Jesus before. He, Jesus never held his hand before. He doesn't know how Jesus looks like. All of a sudden, amongst all them people, Jesus takes this man by hand and begins to drag him out of town to the outside of the village. How long that is, it wasn't probably very far, but it was outside the village. This is not what this man wants. This blind man, he wants a touch. Jesus, I've heard that you've touched people before. If you are the one in the first place, who, if you are the one lady who is holding me by the hand and leading me, why are you doing this? Why don't you just touch me? What we learn from there is, if you want to understand by faith, trust the leader. Trust Jesus. If we're going to be like a blind man, and this is the point I want to emphasize to all of us as Christians, how we grow in this whole thing. Faith, faith makes you, you are blind to everything that we see. You close your eyes, you're blind for it, and you put your trust in Jesus to lead you by the hand. Now you, you, you are in your home right now, I don't know where you're watching me from, just try to do this, blindfold yourself and trust somebody to lead me. I'm not going to play this game between my two sons. <laughs> One will trip the other and let the other fall over. Because that's a game they will play, so they won't trust each other. They will not even allow the other one to blind the other, to put the blind cloth on them. But this man allowed somebody he's never met before to get him by the hand and drag him all the way to outside the town. He did not resist. He did not question. He did not ask, why are you doing this? He just blindly followed as he was already blind. So in order for us to understand by faith, one key thing we need to do is be like a blind man. To be a blind man simply means just to follow. Hallelujah. Woo! Glory be to God. Trusting in something without evidence. Sorry, sorry. I, 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 mean, I mean, you know, to be led as a blind man simply means that you have no idea who is leading him. He had no idea where he was being led to. Hallelujah. Woo! And what he wanted was the touch. However, he followed. If we're going to get to the point where we can just let Jesus' hand, oh Jesus, I, I feel your hand upon me. Irrespective of what I don't understand, you are leading me. May I be blind to all these questions. May I be blind to all these things and just allow you to lead me. Who we'll understand, who we'll begin to understand by faith. That blind man exercised total trust in Jesus, who had the eyes to see what he could not see. Your God, my God, has eyes and the understanding of the situation that we don't have. Let him lead you and I by his hand to the point where eventually we will see and we will understand. Be like a blind man. Hallelujah. Woo! Hallelujah. Let me just clarify one other thing. Being like a blind man is not blind faith. You see, blind faith is, uh, that's what I'm trying to say. Blind faith is trusting in, in something without any evidence. That's blind faith. And God does not want us to have blind faith. Blind faith is trusting something without evidence. We have evidence. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 1 says, Faith is an assurance of something unseen, something hoped for. Assurance, there's evidence, evidence 
So our faith has evidence. So it's not blind faith. But we must be like a blind man that puts this cross around our mind and our eyes and say, Jesus, you are leading me. Because you can see what I can't see. You can understand what I cannot understand. Like it was with those disciples. They came to understand what they could not understand about that evil. Hallelujah. Woo! Glory be to God. So this blind man, who, as he was being laid, he was not taking a leap in the dark. No. He was trusting Jesus. He was trusting Jesus. So you come up against people have accused to say, oh look, you know, you've been suffering, you've been going through all these things, things have not changed for all this time, just, uh, you know, you know, you know, curse your God and come out of this faith. Look, you, 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 you trusted into something that you don't even have evidence for. No, your faith has evidence. Oh, oh hallelujah. But you need to trust him and not use your senses. Glory to God. The next thing uh, is, uh, and, and this scripture here, we have a scripture here in Romans chapter 1 verse 20, you know, which we simply say that for his invisible attributes, namely his eternal power and divine nature have been clearly perceived ever since the creation of the world in the things that have been made, so they are without excuse. So basically what this scripture says is that our faith is not a blind faith. It's all blind faith. But we have to be like a blind man, to be led by him, to be trusting in him. So God is evident in every creation, but it takes faith to believe that God is a creator. Yeah. But that faith is not blind faith. <laughs> you are simply believing and you are convinced and you are assured that there is an invisible God who has created the things that we see. That is faith. Oh, hallelujah. The next thing to understand by faith is we have to be like a fool. Oh, hallelujah. <laughs> Did you hear me? We have to be like a fool. Yeah. To understand by faith, you have to be like a fool. And we've got a scripture on the, on, on, on the screen, First Corinthians chapter 4, verse 10, which says, you know, this is Paul. We are fools for Christ's sake. But you are prudent in Christ. We are weak, but you are strong. You are distinguished, but we are with honor. But look at the first statement. He says, but we are fools for Christ's sake. The NLT, the New Living uh, uh, Testament says, our dedication to Christ makes us look like fools. If you're going to excel in your faith or understanding by faith, you're going to have to be like a fool. Now that doesn't sound like a very, very nice thing to say. You don't want to tell somebody that you're a fool. But I tell you in the things of God, if we're going to understand God, or we understand our walk with God, and how God does the things that He does, we're going to have to be like a fool. Proverbs chapter 14 verse 15 says, The simple believes everything, but the prudent gives thought to his steps. Now let me just give you some bit of uh, an idea about, about Paul when he said this. No, for Paul, for Paul to say these words that we have become, my commitment to Jesus has made me be like a fool. It meant a lot to him. Because if you understand a little bit about Paul, we can probably put into context this, what he meant by these things. He really meant it. Why? Because Paul was a very clever man to start with. He was not only clever, he was very educated. We are told that Paul went to one of the most prestigious noted school of, of, of lovers, the school of Gamaliel. It was a top, top, top school. Where he learned philosophy, he learned ethics, he, Paul was pro, uh, 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 very uh, good at both Hebrew, the Greek culture, the, the Roman culture. This man was, he, 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 he was a superstar. He was clever, he was educated. 
And now we see the same man say, for the sake of Christ, I become like a fool. That's why people did not understand or even believe when they found him preaching Jesus. They thought it was a setup. He says, how can this man who would argue in court and, and cause people to be uh, uh, prosecuted and be persecuted and be put into prison, those who believed in Jesus, he was such a ferocious uh, 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 arguer against believers. And he won cases against them. How can he turn around now and be saying things like this? Who has bewitched this man? Because they could not just understand how this clever, intelligent man could now be talking things that don't seem to make sense. Paul has completely moved from his intellect, understanding and explaining everything by intellect, by philosophy, to now another concept called faith. And people thought, something, this, this man is, is crazy. But it's because the revelation of the Holy Spirit has come into him. And now has come to know there is more for him to understand by faith than even the things he learned into the top school he went to. And that came to be the case. He wrote 10 epistles. I'm in academia, I'm an academic, and one of the things that we do all the time is to, to author things, is to write. And I tell you, it's not easy to author an original piece of work. You can comment on what is already authored, but an original, purely original piece of work takes something. Paul was not referring to anything when he wrote these episodes. Ten of them. And the letters. We know that he did this under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, but this man was clever. But here he goes, he says, for my dedication to Christ, I'm now a fool. He's come to understand that what is causing him to even write all this, there's something more powerful more supernatural called faith and the Holy Spirit that is causing him to understand this invisible, inferable God. To understand by faith, be like a fool. You know, some of you know my testimony. Hallelujah. How God convicted me of this. I've gained so much knowledge into both the visible and the invisible by the grace of God. Hallelujah. Be a fool. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody, just, just say these words to say, 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 Sam, be like a blind man. Sam, be like a fool for the sake of the knowledge, the revelation of God that will come through faith. Woo, hallelujah. And finally, be like a child. To understand by faith, be like a child. Because that scripture in Matthew 18 verse 3, which says, Truly I tell you, he said, unless you change and become like a little children, you will never enter the kingdom of God. Unless you change and become like a little children, you will never enter the kingdom of God. Why is that? Because we are told by psychologists that children's mental development is such that they cannot see danger, they cannot see fear, they cannot see the risk. And therefore, they just go for it. They trust. Who do they trust? They trust their doubt, especially those who guard them, the guardians. They just trust them. They just trust them. So you can see already from here that the lower, the lower, the perception of this and this and the senses the the lesser and developed these senses or, or or subdued these senses are what it develops is some trust in something in somebody as the children opposite their senses are developed they are still developing but there is that other super sense which is the trust in somebody that they 
looks after them. It's the same thing with us. Glory to God. As we subdue these senses, these senses and be like that child, guess what? Our trust in God, who is our guardian, just rises up. Glory be to God. Ooh, isn't that ironic? Praise God. Praise God. I want to play this uh, song by uh, Don Moen, and then I'll come back and just pray with you and encourage you. But I want you to know, I want you to know that you don't have to understand everything. We've not been called to, we are not into this thing to understand everything. But we are in this to trust in everything. And by faith, we have understanding into the things that these senses can't make anything out of it. Particularly in difficult times, in evil around us, in the suffering. By faith, we understand. And to do that, be like a blind man. Be like a fool. And be like a child, only trusting. I'll come back and we'll pray together. But I just want to pray, uh, play this song by by uh, Don Moen. We just uh, play this. I hope it will it will play. It says it it cannot. Uh, Locate the uh, 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 just let me just uh, co copy copy it and then I'll put it in the uh, uh, praise God. It's, it's, it's a song by Don Moen which says, "Just trust and and obey, for there's no other way but to trust." In Jesus. Amen. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. That's what we do. Only trust in, in Jesus. Praise God. I um, hope I've got uh, internet connection here. Uh, let me just get this. Uh, okay, there we go. Yeah. Okay. Praise God. Then we'll come back and just pray together. Okay, I think I've got I've got that now. And uh, praise God. I think he's throwing up this song. I want you to be encouraged by this song. Get closer. That still works. Still work. Just a minute. Okay. There you go. You can hear the song. In the 
we do His good will, He abides with us still, and with all who will trust and obey. Trust and obey, for there's no you've been ministered, you know, by that song, uh, by Don Moen, only to trust and to obey. It's so sweet to do that in Jesus. Why? Because he has understanding. He knows what we do not understand. But we can understand by faith. And faith means we trust in like a blind man. We agree with him like fools and we're just so confident that I will come through like a child. Hallelujah. I've got this just to conclude this before I pray. I want to refer you to a miracle 
a miracle. By definition, a miracle is an effect or an extraordinary event in the physical world that surpasses all known human and natural powers and is ascribed to a supernatural cause. It's all on the screen. Not explicable by natural or scientific law. A natural phenomenon. It's a non-natural phenomenon. Such an effect or event manifesting or considered as a work of God. That is the description. And it's not even just uh, a spiritual description, just, just the description of a miracle. What a miracle is. And the Bible also calls it uh, a wonder or a marvel. So that means a miracle is something that we can't explain. Just like the evil and the suffering. We can't explain it. It's beyond natural uh, law or philosophy or, or, or it's supernatural. Now here's a question. Have you ever had a miracle from God in your life? If you have a miracle from God, and I'm talking about, I'm, I'm, I'm asking this whether you believe or you don't believe. If, if you had a miracle in your life, and you know a miracle is something that you don't understand, you cannot explain. Would you want to ignore the miracle and continue on to seek understanding? No, that's not the way we react. We accept the miracle as something that is just beyond our human uh, understanding. It's beyond the natural law. It's, it's inexplicable. It's non natural phenomena. It is a miracle. But the Bible says that our God is a worker of miracles. Exodus chapter 34, verse 10 says, And the Lord said, Behold, I am making a covenant before all your people. I will perform wonders. And some scriptures say, I will do marvels that have never been done in any nation in all the world. All the people among whom you live will see the Lord's work, for it is an awesome thing that I am doing with you. Wow! That is a miracle. God says, I will do. And He is doing wonders. So in all the things that we cannot understand, explain, including the evil and the suffering, the miracles that whose effects could be good or never. God is behind the marvel and the wonder. Hallelujah. And look at Acts chapter 2 verse 19 which says, And I will show wonders in the heavens above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and billows of smoke. Where would he do these wonders? In the earth below. So we have right now in this earth things we cannot explain by science, things we cannot put our hand around. They are miracles and God is performing miracles in this earth. Who is this earth? You are in this earth. And this is my prayer as God was giving me this word last night. I was saying, but Father God, in the name of Jesus, if my teaching does not get to somebody's heart, I pray for a miracle in their lives, something that will happen that they cannot explain. And that will help them to get to the point where they know what they cannot explain, what they cannot understand. They will come to the point to know there is a God who is connected with it. And the Bible says in, 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 in Mark chapter 16 verse 17 that these incomprehensible things called miracles and marvels and wonders Guess who they follow? The Bible says, And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name, they will shall cast out devils. They will shall speak with new tongues. That's the life that you and I have. We do these things not because we question, but because we believe. And by faith, we understand and we are convinced and we are assured that these things will come to pass. If we be like a child, if we be like a fool, if we be like that blind man, in our trusting, these signs and wonders will come through. I want to pray for somebody right now. 
in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The question doesn't just have to be about things that are hurting. But I'm praying for the miraculous just to hit you in every area of your life. Every area of your life. Where you are seeking answers. You've got the, with the whys that are piling up. Why the delays? Why this situation? Why that and that? I want to pray in the name of Jesus that the power, the miracle working God, the power of the miracle working God will come over you right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, by the power of the Holy Spirit, I speak a sign and a wonder and a marvel as according to your word that you shall perform these things in the lives of your people on this earth. In the name of Jesus, that shall confound the understanding of the intellect and the mind and all the senses in the name of Jesus, Holy Spirit, the power of God, minister to somebody right now. Oh, thank you, Lord. In the name of Jesus. In the name of just somebody just reach out by faith reach out by faith reach out by faith right now reach out by faith like that blind man hallelujah let him lead you hallelujah just just drop drop your interest hallelujah and just reach out by faith and say i believe in the name of jesus i may not understand but i know that there is an invisible and yet real and powerful god who is at work in my situation right now and turning things round and bring you outside the village where your sight shall be restored and you will see in the name of Jesus father thank you for the patience thank you for the understanding thank you for the trusting hallelujah as you walk this journey from that moment where Jesus has met you to the outside of the village I pray that the miracle awaits you outside the village just trust just follow. Oh, hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, let him lead you. Don't turn back. Oh, makababa shikaramandai. I sense the power of God over somebody right now. Let him continue to lead you. You're not being stupid. You're not being an idiot. You trust him. You trust him. Your foolishness is wisdom. Your weakness is strength. Wow. Oh, hallelujah. Your embarrassment is, is a honor. In the name of Jesus. Why? Because your understanding. Understanding is coming to you by faith. Right now. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Oh, Lord, I give you praise. I give you praise. I give you praise. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, I hope you've been helped uh, by this word. Hallelujah. Go over it. Let him get into your spirit, into your heart. Share it with somebody else in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Understand by faith. Only understand by faith. Only believe. Be like a blind man. Be like a fool. And be like a child. We are not in this to understand everything. But I've put it on the screen there. But to trust in everything. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Please get in touch with us through our website. We've got contact details there. If you're not from City Family Church. Uh, uh, please you can get in touch with us. We will pray with you. We will help you. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. And from City Family Church. We always say. Be led by the Spirit. Grow in exceeding faith and abound in love. We will see you again soon. We hope you've been blessed today. Share this message with others. Hallelujah. Let them be blessed as well. In Jesus' name. It's been good to be with you. And I'll see you again soon. Amen. For Seed Family Church, we'll see you again this evening. Hallelujah. We'll just pray together. We'll bring our experiences of where you have been like a blind man. Hallelujah. Where you've been like a child. Where you've just been like a fool. Hallelujah. Come testify tonight. Glory be to God and, and how it all worked out. We're just sharing our experiences tonight about, about understanding by faith. And I know you do have 
and experience. Bring it out and share tonight and we will pray together as well. In Jesus' name, we'll see you soon. Amen. Bye for now.